All right, welcome back, SML, to Battle at the Border. This is our second episode for Season 1, Madden 22. And uh, after the first episode, it looks like, uh, due to your comments, I'm a winner, 21-13, to 13, Team USA. Uh, once again, taking down the uh, bad guys up north. And uh, <laughs> how do you feel about that, Fins? It's, it's not going too well for you. I, I, I figured it was going to be this way. Being the only international member, it was going to be an uphill climb. But... Uh, the more important thing, I guess, for me is the audio diva mic. How 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 does it feel? Is it do I sound okay? Are you, are you delicate ears can handle this? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about Mike, but it, it's it sounds pretty good. So nice. Uh, at least for now, we're off to a good start. So let's let's <laughs> jump right into it. Um, didn't really expect this to be the uh, Thanos Club episode, but it looks like four out of our five topics. Now that DW is a member of the Thanos Club. Um, it looks like they're going to be about them, and uh, <laughs> it may not go very well for me. So, topic one, Clink is now 5-2 and two after that loss to Pauly. Is he for real? Go ahead. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think he is for real. Um, you know, he, he has a team that, it's got some talent, but it's not like, it's kind of like those middle-tier teams. It's not like a QP team where he's, you know, you can make an argument that he's kind of playing above his talent level with the team anyway, not for him. Um, but it's not like a top tier team like yours or primes or uh, the Panthers, right? Uh, he's playing great defense. And like his defense is, is top 10, I think in a lot of categories. Um, and if he can cut down those interceptions, uh, like I think he's got a 13 touchdown to 13. So one to one TD in, in ratio, he's only going to get better. Uh, he's, beaten some pretty good teams. Noel's playing pretty good. He's beat Noel. He beat NYT. Uh, and his schedule moving forward is in the next five games, I think, there's, those are all winnable games. And then it gets significantly more difficult. But he could finish the season anywhere between 10 and 12 wins. I, I think I'm going to take the middle ground there and put him at 11. So he'll finish 11 and 6, which puts him in the playoffs. So, uh, yeah, he is for real. Yeah, uh, 11 and 6 absolutely puts him in the playoffs. And if he were to win 11 games, I would agree with you that he's for real. However, he's sitting at 5 and 2 right now. Um, he's got losses, uh, a loss to Polly. And the other loss, do you know who it was to? Lawyer. 3 and 5 lawyer. Right. Um, schedule has been favorable early. His best two wins, you mentioned them Noel, who's playing well, and NYT. But both are far from proven winners. Um, They'll, they'll have their moments, but they also uh, quickly turn back into 500 and below teams uh, based on the season. So just having two wins over those two doesn't really convince me that he's for real. Um, a loss to Lawyer Hurts looked lost versus Pauly. At one point, that game was 28 to nothing um, in the second quarter. So it was it was pretty bad. Then there was a, a disconnect and... Uh, I forget what the final score ended up being. I think it was still Pauly by two scores. Um, yeah, I think it was. He's also given up 125 rushing yards a game, which when you start playing the better teams, I think that's going to be a problem if you can't stop the run. And uh, he's he's 10th in points, but every offensive category right now, he's 21st or worse. So he's not really moving the ball. And I think, again, when the competition gets better, like you just said, it's going to get tougher as uh, the second half of the schedule comes up. I think that's where he's going to have a problem. Uh, yeah, but you can you can overcome those offensive deficiencies if you are you know causing a lot of three and outs, right? Like you said, he's given he's bleeding rushing yards, but yeah. through the air, like he's third in pass yards and fourth in total yards. So uh, and seventh in points. So if 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 he can, like I think you know, there's always going to be a regression to the mean, right? Like he's Clink is is kind of known as one of those, you know, uh, kind of underrated defensive users, right? So he's, you know, he, I think he's starting to get a little bit of his just due in terms of, like, recognition for how good of a player he is on defense. If he can figure out that offense, he's going to be a fu- he's going to be fine. Yeah, I just think uh, being where he's at right now against a favorable schedule is just going to get worse when the schedule gets tougher. So I, I think he's not for real. He definitely has the potential to prove he is um but we didn't see anything like 
far and away great last season. He was a fringe playoff team. I think he did get in the last season, um, which he took over a team mid cycle. So, you know, you kind of give him a little bit of a pass on that, but right now five and two best wins are Nolan NYT. I'm just not buying that. He's for real yet. I mean, well, until you prove it, I guess, I like, guess is going to be a theme for one of the questions that we, we go have later, but uh, until you prove it, I guess, you know, y- y- you have to do it. But um, I think, you know, he's shown enough this year to show that he is. All right. So topic two, topic two is, can QP win the NFC with the Lions? What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Q- QP is a guy who, uh, like, he ever since that trade, he is just lighting his opponents up. You know, he's, he's, um, his offense has been absolutely dominant since he, um, I, I got, he, oh my God, I can't even say, he, when he got Herbert, you know, he crushed Demuse, who is, you know, one of the better players in that conference. Uh, he's lost a future. Uh, Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah he lost right. to Future. And up until Future's lost to Fig, was playing great. That was kind of an outlier, I guess. Um, and so looking at kind of the standings and how people are playing right now, it, it, as much as we t- I just talked up Clink, I still think that the NFC goes through either Tampa Bay or, this. in this case, I think the Lions. I can't put Dump in that category yet because – Dump has that reputation of kind of fading when the games get tough. Um, So I think it's either going to go through Tampa Bay or Detroit. And if I had to pick between Pauly and QP at this juncture, I'm going to go with QP. Okay. I disagree, obviously. Um, (laughs) So I think think the roster is just too bad. I think QP is probably the best player in the NFC. I don't even know if if too many people – Outside of Dump and Pauly would disagree. Maybe Demuse uh, could be thrown in there too. Um, but outside of those three, I don't even think there's a, a close second. Um, yeah. And, and I think QP is is above those three as well. Um, but the roster is just too bad. I think before it's before it's said and done, he'll win the NFC at some point this cycle. But I, I, it's not going to be this year. I think the roster gap is too much to overcome. Uh, only team he's, he's played... Uh, that had a winning record was like you said the bears and he got beat not just beat but 31 to 17 it was it wasn't just like a close game uh, he got beat pretty bad he's been living on turnovers uh, he's got a, a 76 overall corner i think that has 11 turnover or 11 interceptions um he's just killing people and that happens when you're playing spooky october lawyer fig um but the problem is when you start playing guys like Polly. Polly doesn't turn the ball over much at all um, Demus is going to play a little better with the ball, depending on if he gets away from trying to, uh, throw it everywhere with Kellen Mond and, uh, and dumps team dump doesn't generally turn it over too much. Um, so I think the teams with the big talent gaps and the better decision makers, like I said, the Cardinals, the Bucks, even the Cowboys, Grams is pretty good, uh, at making decisions. Usually I think he's thrown a few more interceptions this year, but guys like that, that he can't get those turnovers with because they're not throwing right at the guy. Um, I think that's going to be a problem. Um, and I, I think the next few weeks will determine it. He's got Matt. He's got me. He's got future again. And then he's got the Cardinals all left on his schedule. Um, but but the way it is with that <coughs> roster, I just don't think his roster is going to carry him to it. That future loss, though, comes before Herbert. It right. Does. So um, I think that probably and that probably I think the very, he made the trade right after that. So that was probably, you know, the inciting incident into his, you know, willing to to kind of move those picks for Herbert. And like he, he's had two five touchdown games with, since he's had Herbert. So not only is that, you know, 76 overall corner apparently lighting the world on fire, Herbert, I think he's got 14 touchdowns and five picks since he's been in Detroit. So, you know, he can score with anyone. Um, and I think he's the reason – well, sorry, this is going to sound dumb, but hey, I was going to say he's the reason why they're winning, but obviously he's controlling them, but he's so good, I think that he can make up for that, that you know, lack of talent, right? I just think this is this is the season where it's it's going to bite him. Um, he's he's going to have, he's got a first round pick still. 
Um, and then obviously seconds and all, and all that. And he'll be able to build through the draft. He might even have a little bit of cap space. But I think this season, look at the Cardinals roster. Look at the Bucks roster. It's not even close. All they've got to do is just run it down his throat the whole game. And, you know, you can only control one guy on defense. The other 10 are going to be severely outmatched. And it's it's going to be a problem. Um, so I, I think he'll get into the playoffs, probably win a game or two in the playoffs. I just don't think he can get past the Cardinals, the Bucks, and and maybe even a surprise out of the Cowboys. Yeah, but, time will tell. Yeah, like I said, the next few weeks, Steelers, Browns, Bears, and Cardinals. So, um, it's yeah, that, that's that's a tough four games. If if he can come through two and two in that, then that, like we'll know a lot more how he's going to face and fare in the playoffs, right? Unless, of course, those two are the uh, the NFC teams, because <laughs> then that's possibly two NFC teams better than him, especially the Bears game. If Future beats him again. Then, then future may have his number, and it looks like future's going to be able to, to m- at least make the playoffs, and and could be a problem for him. Yeah, I, I worry about. I know this is kind of off topic, but I, like that loss to Fig could send him spiraling, right? Like that's that's yeah, probably well that's probably like he probably came into that game thinking, okay, you know, I got this win. That's like that old trap game that uh, you know that QP just got over when he barely beat Tiny, yep. right? So if it th- those kind of things were, you know, if because I think Fig actually beat Feature pretty good, like it wasn't a close game. So he's either going to come out and you know try to overcompensate, or he's going to you know succumb to the pressure. It's going to be interesting. Yeah, we'll see what he does. Uh, but it, it'll, it'll be interesting to watch. I just don't think QP right now can win the NFC just with that roster. Right. All right, so talking about QP, let's talk about the QP and Dan trade. Um, you just talked about it where uh, QP got Herbert, he got Nwosu, and then Dan got Colts first, uh, QP's first the following season, and then Jared Goff thrown in. Who do you think won that trade? Uh, this is going to be a theme for the next question as well. So I'm going to say QP, uh, and he paid a hefty price, but he got a, a really young uh, star dev quarterback. Uh, and, you know, so I was talking to QP about um, Vaughn mm-hmm. and, you know, his his response when, when you know, he won. I think I t- started talking to him when he, he won. He was 3-0 and at the time or 2-1 and one, or 3-1, and one, one of the two. And uh, his response was absolutely not. Like, I'm not moving those picks, whatever. So he was obviously trying to save for a quarterback. Um, he got his young quarterback and he's – undefeated i think since he's he's 4-0 uh as i said in the last question he's 14 touchdowns five picks uh two of those games he's got five touchdown games uh he's in win now mode so um he i think he you know he looked at that after he lost to future Goff was obviously you know killing him and uh he he went out and he you know i'm never gonna fault a guy for trying to win right Mm -hmm. um so uh the fact that he got a young quarterback and he's got still got three years left, you know, he's got, uh, so he can build, he has, he's going to have cap flexibility, hopefully for him. I didn't look too far into that, but, uh, um, you know, he's seven and one now with, uh, his, he's set at quarterback for the cycle. Uh, to me, it's gotta be QP. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to change it up and I'm going to go with Dan. Uh, the only difference we've seen in, in quarterback play seems to be, there's a difference between superstar and above and non-superstar quarterbacks. Uh, you see what Matt's doing with Haskins. He's 5-2. and two. He's got Dwayne Haskins as his quarterback. Um, so I, I think that the the golf for Herbert, while Herbert's going to be there longer, um, it's it's not really going to affect Dan. He's going to bring in some other quarterback. And unless Herbert was a, was a superstar, they're going to pretty much play the same for him. Um, and Dan has the ability to dev any quarterback this year more than any other year. Um, we saw it last year. He, you know, traded Drew Locke, brings in Emery Leverett or whatever his name was, gets him to superstar, trades him to Figs for a fortune, and then drafts some guy in the second round, turns him into a superstar before the cycle's out. Um, so Dan has the ability to to develop those quarterbacks, and it doesn't seem to hinder him too much. And then something that kind of gets lost in the mix, and I think somebody even br- on a first and goal may have brought up the pick. It's Colt's pick this year. Colt is playing terribly. He's staying with guys and then just losing. 
Um, he's going to probably have anywhere between a top five and top 10 pick. And that's big, especially the first draft. If I'm Dan, I'm probably shopping that pick. If it's, if it's within range to get a quarterback, I may shop it to a, a team that needs a quarterback and I may get two more firsts out of it. Um, and then he's got another first next year. So in these first two drafts, he's going to have two first round picks. Everybody's talking about how loaded the drafts are. Um, especially these first two seasons when those guys are going to be around for the whole cycle. I think that's a huge deal. And, and he's going to have, you know, a top half pick as well as, uh, his own and then QPs next year. So, uh, I think it's Dan wins this. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, if, if, if I'm being honest, there's probably really no loser of this, right? Like, um, you know, better than me because you've been with, uh, with you've played with QP longer. I'm not sure how much of a team builder he is. Um, we all know Dan can the, the issue is, is will Dan keep the quarterback, right? Like Dan <laughs> to, seems to kind of, kind of get antsy and just turn guys yep. over. Um, so, uh, I think it works out probably both well. I think th- this season, I think it works better for QP. I think the biggest issue for, for me for QP's side of the deal is I feel like he could use two first round picks over the next two years with that Lions roster. Um, already talked about how I think the roster is what's going to hold him back um, because skill wise, he's probably the best player in the NFC. It's just playing with those lines is going to be tough. And I think he could have probably used those two firsts and done a little better than, than what Herbert's going to be right now. Um, I think he could have probably swung a second or, or, or something like that for, or even one first for a, a comparable quarterback. Maybe you're not going to get a, a young guy on a rookie deal like Herbert, but somebody that you could play with. Um, you look at Tiny right now with with Jalen Hurts and 29 interceptions. He's going to move on from him. He's going to have a top pick. He's going to want to draft a quarterback. Take Jalen Hurts. Um, you could have probably got him a lot cheaper. I know it's his favorite team, so that that kind of uh, leads you to overpay. DW tell you about that, but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I think just with the amount of holes he has, he couldn't afford to give up that many picks. Yeah, that that was where I was going with that next is, you know, uh, I I don't think he sends those two first-round picks for any other quarterback. Yeah. Uh, Herbert is the key, right? I would I would think it has to be being his chargers. Yeah. All right, so that brings us to topic number four. Topic four, another trade. This one really kind of snuck in there. Nobody said anything about it. Um, it was Field and Polly. Uh, Polly gives up. He gives up Gronkowski. He gives up Antonio Brown and his second round pick in exchange for Field's first round pick. Who do you think won this trade? Uh, yeah, I'm I'm gonna go with Field. Um, and while while he's struggling in that division, I I, I don't think I think that division is still winnable. Like it, there's no real powerhouse in there. Like all of those players are p- pretty comparable. I th- I think Coop is probably the favorite in that division, and he'll probably be the favorite for the cycle. But I think this trade now kind of gives Field this season anyway the most talented offensive. W- sorry, Tiny. Outside of Tannehill, right? Like uh, I and, and if you watch Field streams he's constantly talking about how Tanny sales passes and, and kind of like he, he's erratic, but you know, you now have to account for Brown Jones. Um, the other Brown, mm-hmm. right. And, and Gronk like good luck. So like you, you, you have to pick your poison. If Tanny can, can, you know, if he can figure out a way to, to be serviceable with Tannehill, he's not out of this division, even though he's two and six, uh, Yes, he paid a hefty price, but like I said, um, I'm never going to fault a guy for for trying to win. Um, and that hefty price goes to a guy who isn't necessarily the best team builder. I mean, again, I, I'm just going on what Prime says. Prime constantly refers to Polly as you know not very uh, accomplished at team building, so uh, it may not be that hefty of a price in the end because Polly, you know, may miss on a guy. But uh, uh, I, th- I think right now I'm going to go with Field. All right. Well, I'm going to go with Pauly. Um, I think turning bench players, because that's what they were on his team. Neither one of them was, was playing much. He turned bench players uh, and a second-round pick, which uh, being the NFC and being Pauly, it's probably going to be a very late, I would say probably 
last four picks in the second round. Um, he's going to turn that into a top half of the draft player, which if the drafts are as stacked as, as they have been in, in people's test leagues, that's, that's a stud player. Um, it's going to be a stud young guy that he can probably replace Brady with or, uh, or somewhere on the defense, whatever he wants to do really, because that team's pretty, pretty well filled out right now. Um, but it's, it's just going to be that for basically a second round pick because he had no intentions of bringing back Brown and Gronkowski anyway. So two guys that were going to hit free agency are now shipped off for a, and a second round pick to get a top half of the first round pick. I'll take that any day. There's no way you can consider that a loss. Um, so I would, I would definitely say Pauly wins this one. Now, whether or not he makes good with those picks that he's going to have, cause he's going to have his first and fields. Um, I would assume he'll trade that. I think we even talked about him him trading that most likely to to fig for Trey Lance on a, <laughs> on midseason report card. We'll see if that works out. Uh, he seems to find a way to get get something from Fig, but two firsts. He doesn't have to draft if he doesn't want to. He can use that to trade up and get his his quarterback of the future with, with Brady aging. Yeah, I mean it, it. It as a guy who you know went and tried to trade one of my vets. Right for 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 draft capital, I think it's a good move for Polly. I just think this season, I think um, with Field, it, he's making a play in that division, and I think I mean I think he's sitting in third place in that division right now. But yeah. like I said, I don't yeah. think he's out of it. No, he's not out of it. But I feel like with the with the pick that he had, knowing where it's going to be in the draft, he probably could have got somebody that's going to last a little longer. Uh, Brown and Gronkowski. Even if you resign them, which they're going to want, I'm sure, more money than you're going to want to pay for them at their age. Um, if they want any type of long-term deal, that's even worse because they're going to regress. But I don't see either of those two even sticking around for the next three years. So you just gave up a, a first-round pick that's going to be a, a future star. And in the next three years, you could lose Antonio Brown, Gronkowski, and let's not forget Julio Jones is up there in age too, and he may be gone. Now you got nothing, and you gave up your first-round pick. So... I think that one's uh, got to go to Pauly. All right. So topic number five. And once again, we, uh, we have the Thanos club newest member involved. So like I said, I'm not going to win this, this episode, but uh, is DW a legitimate contender in the AFC? Yes. And, and uh, here's, I mean, the man's undefeated. Right. Like we, mm -hmm. we, we can we can say all we want about how his schedule has been light. I mean, I, I, I'm one of those. I, we all know that DW kicked me in the face and the groin at the same time on uh, first and goal and everyone else who he beat. We know he doesn't respect me, but I'm going to show him the respect he didn't give me and say, yes, uh, he's six and oh, he's undefeated. And, uh, you know, even if we're going to say that his schedule has been light, he has beat everyone he's played and you can only play your schedule. So um, also is he's, his defense is incredibly good. He's second in points, first in yards, first in pass yards and second in rush yards. So he's, you know, not only beating guys like me, um, he's shutting them down. And I think there's something to be said about his play style in this Madden so far. He, you know, he, he again, he's not really doing, he's seventh in points scored, but the other kind of, like, it's all coming from turnover. It must be coming from turnover. So, yeah, provided he can continue to play lockdown defense, he, he looks like he's going to be able to play with anybody. And I, I know he's still got two games against Meats and two games against Foz, mm -hmm. but I, I I mean, I, he's probably going to lose those games against Foz, but I, I don't think he is going to necessarily lose against Meats, right? So um, he, yeah, I think at this point, I don't know how you can't call someone who's undefeated not a legitimate contender. All right, well, I'll show you how. So I'm going to say <laughs> I'm going to say no. He's not a legitimate contender. Um, Six and zero start. You're right. Absolutely. Uh, undefeated. He's playing really well. Um, and you can only play the guys in front of you. But 
But if if we were just going to go off records and say he's six and zero, doesn't matter who he played, then we don't even need to have this show. We'll just everybody six and zero as a contender. Um, of those six teams that he played and beat, two wins have come against the team with multiple wins. Four of them have only won one game. Um, so you're talking, you have six wins and combined those six teams have a total of 10 wins. Um, that's less than two per team. You have the four and four Panthers and the two and six Titans. The only two teams that have multiple wins that he beat, um, of those wins that he has only half of them have been by, uh, been by more than one score. So he's, he's not blowing out these one win teams either. He's, he's squeaking by them, uh, by one score. He was a fringe playoff team last cycle. He has some talent. Um, but I think his current start is more of a reflection of his schedule than anything else. I mean, he's he's playing well. He's not having those trap games or or playing bad and uh, and letting teams take advantage of what is a a pretty bad roster. Um, it's similar to QP. I think the the roster is what's going to hamstring him against uh, better competition. But six of his last nine games, they're going to be with uh, teams that have winning records. I think he loses all six, and I think eleven and six, he'll probably make the playoffs. Uh, but I think he'll be a first-round exit as long as somehow he doesn't get that fifth seed and, and get the uh, second bye in the AFC, which is the AFC South. Um, but, I mean, you know, you ask yourself, is he a legitimate contender? If he goes up against Faz, do you think he has any chance? Probably not. Okay, do you think he has any chance going up against Prime? The way Prime's playing right now, Field beat him. So, yeah. All right, I'll, I give, you, I'll give you that, Prime. Yeah. So if if we if uh, they're playing right now, and you got to put fifty bucks on it, you would you would feel comfortable? Probably not. No. What about me? You you gonna put him up against the Browns? Yes, okay. I think he dominates you. All right, good. Me and him will set up a game and and uh, <laughs> we'll put those fifty dollars on the line. Um, even meats. I don't think he beats meats. I don't think he beats Dan. Um, it's the Jets. And he hasn't beaten anybody yet. Um, and like you said, you you bring up those teams at the top. And the question is, is he a legitimate contender? I don't think he's even in the ballpark with Faz. Um, I think he just gets completely destroyed if he goes up against that Bills team. Yeah, I mean, like, so we're, there's officially only two undefeated teams. Faz probably would be the third yeah. if he you know, had played Matt. I know Matt's Matt is doing his Matt thing and constantly discounting himself, but um, Matt's a good player. Um, so Fuzz might have lost that game, but I don't know how you can't. I mean, I we, I know we we know his history and we know that he's you know a top middle tier player usually, but like I said, I think this Madden is kind of playing a little different this year. So, well, sorry, not kind of. It definitely is playing a little different this year, and he's seemed to kind of figure it out on defense. And if and you know if he can if he can do that, then he's good. Yeah, I just think the uh, the defense and and what he's figured out on defense is more a reflection of the uh, the schedule. I don't think. And he hasn't played anybody that's top scoring teams in the league. It's it's all been the bottom half of the league. So I think that's going to kind of skew those numbers a little bit. And right now, I mean, you know, all credit to him. He's 6-0. and he's, he's beaten everybody he's played. I just don't think that when those last six uh, winning record teams come around, I don't think he's going to have the same success. Um, and I think, like you said, you, you return to the mean. I think that's what's going to happen is he's going to return to kind of where he was last cycle. Prove them wrong, DW. Fight for us lower tier guys. There you go. So I'm I'm gonna have to probably concede that point from uh the majority of the Thanos Club, which is gonna be the case for the rest of the show. But that's been it for this week at uh Battle of the Border Thanos episode. <laughs> um didn't intend it to be that way, but uh they had their big <laughs> news this morning and it just turned out that that's how it worked out. So um appreciate you being on Fins. I know you just came home from work, so feel free to get out of your work clothes and uh and drink I really dressed up or... for this episode. We got a collar on and everything. There you go. Get you some maple syrup, slam a couple of bats, and uh, can't wait. We'll see you next week on Battle at the Border. <laughs>